You're listening to the They May All Be One podcast with Shane Sands, founder and president of United in Christ Jesus. Hello and welcome to another episode of the They May All Be One podcast. I'm your co-host, Holly Sands. Today we've got a really interesting program for you on spiritual warfare, and Shane's going to introduce that to you shortly, but first, please help me welcome our host, he likes old blue jeans, guitar strings, and dirt roads. Everybody likes a dirt road. My husband, Shane Sands. Oh yeah. A little slow burn. <laughs> oh, I love every week. Honey, when you let me know the different things that we're going to do for introductions, I man, we go all over. You got disco. Uh, you just, it's been fun setting these up. <laughs> yeah, it's been a lot of fun, actually. And yes, we're going to get into spiritual warfare um, very soon. But you know what else is that we decided we were like, you know, we haven't had a lot of fun in our lives recently. Not enough. <laughs> so we said, you know what? What about, you know, how can we just take it up a notch in the fun scale? <laughs> and I was like, honey, what about, this is the time last year that we tried to, to go look at buying a house. Why don't we try it again this year? Yeah, let's do that, especially when it's... Uh terrible seller's market and interest rates are through the roof <laughs> yay yeah, yes. and, I mean, and, yay. <laughs> and like last year last year it was so crazy that you thought you were having to do a special military drill just to go see a house something comes on the market go 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 <laughs> and you're jumping in the car and you're That's driving off it was too. <laughs> yeah uh, and it's crazy and so right now we're still in that that bubble and if if you just knew our situation and our how we are we have a very narrow window that we have to operate in. Mm. So this year, Holly last year I should say found this clip of a person selling an apple. And it's very applicable to our market now. Holly, why don't you play that clip for us? Yeah, here it is. Excuse me. Is that Apple for sale? Uh, yeah, we're about to put it on sale right now, actually. Well, I'm in the market, so tell me about your Apple. Why should I buy it? <laughs> nice try. Okay, people, here's how this is gonna work. I have an Apple here. The highest bidder's going home with this. I want all bids in in the next two minutes, then we're closing it. Bidding starts at $5. Feeling pretty confident there, huh? I mean, don't you $10. think? $10. He said starting at five. 15. Is this a new Apple? Yeah, just listed. I'm pre-qualified. I'll pay cash. I got cash. 20. Uh, 30. 40. No, just make it 45. Is it even worth that? 50. I don't know. Please, this is the eighth apple I've tried to buy. Could I at least see it up close? Uh, nope, it's an apple. You know what it is. You either want it or you don't. I'll take it for 100. What? I'm from California. It's the cheapest apple I've ever seen. 120. Why did I do that? Why? I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it's crazy. And so we were just like, you know. There's there's nothing like a little excitement of going house hunting in probably one of the worst markets to be a buyer. Uh, Please pray for us. Yeah. <laughs> Please pray for our nerves. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. But now moving kind of into the serious part, and, and we've actually, as we were going to be talking about on spiritual warfare, we've actually had so much fun prepping for this actual podcast. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's, oh, once again, the joys. Buy a house, prepare for a podcast. Yay. Pure joy. <laughs> Count it pure joy. <laughs> now I know why he said that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Ah, so as Holly said, uh, back in 2019 when I was, or 2018, at the end of 2018, when the Lord finally granted for me to go to South Africa, I got to partner up with uh, several pastors that I had labored with at the 2012 Olympics in London. And when Pastor Rodney was like, I want you to preach, 
I spent time in prayer, and I just asked the Lord to direct me, what would you have me to preach on? And I had no idea, and this is what's amazing, I had no idea what what they had their focus on, so the Lord led me to spiritual warfare. And when I told uh, Rodney about it, he was like, interesting. I think you're going to enjoy what you see. So when I actually got to Cape Town and I went to his church, where the church he shepherds, I should say, along the back wall is this giant mural about spiritual warfare. And it was quite interesting because the Lord had put a different direction for me on spiritual warfare than what we're normally used to thinking about. Um, So when I talk about spiritual warfare, the first place that we have to think about, the first thing that we have to really focus in on is where is the originator, uh, who is the originator of spiritual warfare, and that is the devil. And the devil goes through so many different names. Uh, You have the evil one, the serpent, You have uh, Satan, Lucifer, all these different names. So when I talk about spiritual warfare, uh, the originator is Satan himself. And so when I talk about that and I mention it, certain things come to mind. You know, when I say, you know, football, you think about some concept of football comes into your head. If I say baseball, something there. So when I talk about spiritual warfare, something's already popped into your head, some some category for you. Al spine. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I just had, you know, a twitchy eye come over me. <laughs> so some of you will when I mention what do you think of with spiritual warfare, you're gonna say, Well, it's a, com- a continual bombardment of atheist or other religious people. Um uh, calling us names and threatening violence on us. Some will say it's hearing false doctrine. Some will think of trying to read your Bible and not being able to concentrate. Some will think of the movies where Satan is already in hell and comes up to win a soul, talking about how hot it is in hell. Yeah, it's hot down there, and uh, I'm going to get you. Some will say that it's... Fake news. Very Um, fake news. (laughs) And the fears of this world. Some will say that it's a a person, a co-worker, a neighbor, uh, somebody that gets under your skin and you have to say, not today, Satan. Not today. (laughs) Oh, that's, yeah, that's pretty funny. I like it. And it, and, and so we think of all these different categories of spiritual warfare that is headed up by Satan himself. So are are the things that I just went over, are, are all of those part of spiritual warfare? Well, maybe some of it is, maybe a little bit. One of the names of the devil is one where we get our actual, our, we get our word, anvil from. And you know what an anvil is. It's something where you forge a weapon or like a horseshoe. You make things out of metal on it. So when you take the anvil and you mix that and you join that together with Satan, that brings some clarity to what spiritual warfare is. Now Holly and I made a recording of our scripture today, which is Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 20. And when I think of Satan using a hammer and pounding away on a believer, this is what I believe spiritual warfare is. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. 
In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. And with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. And pray on my behalf that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in proclaiming it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So that was crystal clear, no aggravation whatsoever. (laughs) (laughs) Extremely annoying. (laughs) Yeah, Holly, I bet uh, you, as well as all of those who will be listening out there, had a really difficult time hearing me uh, with all that hammering happening. And that's actually what I did in uh, Cape Town. I actually had, I forget, was it a glass or something, or maybe I used my fist, but I actually pounded away on the podium yeah and when i stopped reading i asked everyone i said so who had difficulty hearing me or following along and over 90 percent of the people raised their hand yeah it it makes it hard to concentrate on anything except for that pounding exactly so now i'm going to do just like i did there i'm going to do it again now so i'm going to read the scripture again and let's see if we can notice a difference Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit, and with this in view, Be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. And pray on my behalf that utterance may be given me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in proclaiming it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So I take it that was a little better? Much better. Yeah. Isn't it amazing how much... uh, more clear the word of God is when you remove all distractions. And I mean, think about it. You as well as I, and I'm pretty much sure everybody out there, when you want to have your devotional time with the Lord, you like to get in a place where you can just settle down, remove all the outside noise and all the distractions, and just be alone with just you and the Lord. Yeah, that's why I get up way before dawn. (laughs) (laughs) So you're making that concentrated effort to be alone and remember at the beginning of this scripture it said that it's the schemes of the devil right the stand firm against the schemes of the devil and satan has many schemes yes so many ways to try and come at us but all of them have to do with disruption and destruction each day you arise you have to get dressed like a soldier. And I, I was in the military. So I know when you're out in the field, every morning before sunrise, you have to get in, you get set up for a morning attack. Everyone's in their foxholes. Everyone's got their weapons out. You've got your sectors of fire. You are expecting attack, so you are prepared. So from the moment that you get up and get going, you are ready for any and all things to come. And that's spiritual warfare. That, that's, that's in essence what we have to do. Because when Satan comes at us, he's trying to drown out the word of God. He's trying to, to take away, every time, take away that ability for you to, to sit and focus and be nourished and rest upon the Lord. 
you know, just like uh, when I was in the military, we have to check our equipment. We have to make sure that everything that we had from our uniforms to our weapons and our gear, everything was in good working order so that we could actually get into the field and, and accomplish the mission. So this is what Satan's trying to take away. When you look up there in the section of Scripture, uh, Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, you see that there's this equipment, this, this armor that we are to put on. And when you look at it, it talks about different aspects of what God has entrusted to us. So when you get into your daily routine, when you get going, you want to start out your day with all of this armor on because you and I and you listening out there know that once you take your first step, Satan is coming after you. Satan wants to discourage you. He wants to take away your joy. He wants to, he doesn't come at you with heavy blows like Mike Tyson. You notice I didn't say anything about him hitting us heavy over and over like big haymakers. No, Satan does just like what we did in that recording. He hits you slow and steady. He finds the weakness in your armor. Constantly circling you. And then he just pounds on you and pounds on you and pounds on you. And it whittles away. And, and over a period of time, it gets to you. And then when it gets to you, he has you. I mean, think about what your day is full of. Think about the things that God has, that in your daily life, God has placed in your life that Satan tries to use to come against you. Some of you have children, and they're young, and it's a big, huge distraction. Uh, think about that you might, well, here in South Carolina especially, you got traffic. I mean, I mean that's not a distraction for you, is it, honey? No. No. <laughs> not at all. Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> oh my goodness. It's so crazy. The driving here, I'm telling you. Uh, um, perhaps it is that coworker. Perhaps there is somebody that is your neighbor, somebody who's annoying, who just goes out of their way to try and be annoying. Uh, maybe it's your finances. Maybe it's your relationships. There's all these things that are in our lives that Satan tries to take and twist so that he can pound on you day in, day out. No stopping, no resting. You become so weary because as often as you try to settle in and just gaze upon the Lord, as soon as you're in the world, it feels like you're just overwhelmed. And this takes you away from the Lord, gets you caught up in the things of the world, and it causes you to become discouraged. And the fact is, is the war is already won on the cross when Jesus said, it is finished. He didn't mean it is finished and now you got to go out and do something. No, Satan was defeated, foe, on the cross. His resurrection, the Lord Jesus' resurrection, the vindication, the validation, it was all over. And it's by way of the finished work of Jesus Christ that we are been given God's grace, these pieces of armor to place on ourselves every day that if we take the time day in and day out, to arm ourselves and put these on, not only do we stand firm, we're victorious. And it's not because we're, we're waging the bot battle, the battle's already been won. No, we're victorious because we're following in the steps of Christ going home. Um, Holly, you got me a really neat study Bible. 
not because I love the New International Version translation, but you got me uh, the D.A. Carson Study Bible, and I kind of like D.A. Carson a little. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, D.A. Carson has been used of the Lord tremendously in my life. Uh, still the most influential sermon I have ever heard on what it means to be a Christian and the church, a holy nation, the church is high calling. D.A. Carson, look that up. That's the plug there. <laughs> but what I like about this study Bible, he's the general editor, but the people who write the notes, some gifted people. And I like the way the NIV put this. These these pieces of armor, they're symbolic, and they symbolize truth, righteousness, the gospel, faith, salvation, and the word of God. And it's pretty amazing when you stop and take time and think through those. Now, I'm not going to go through those, but I want you to really think. Truth, righteousness, the gospel, faith, salvation, and the word of God. That is what God has given us to equip us so that every day that you go out, that you walk in victory. You can walk, not not like you're going to be in despair. Yes, the war is has been won. Victory has been accomplished, but it's still the most vicious fighting happening right there. It's still going on. So, I'm not going to go through those different categories, but what I am going to want to talk to you about is their use. Now, there have been many scholars and pastors who've talked about how, uh, except for the sword, all of these pieces of armor are defensive. They're meant to protect us. And even the sword, even though it's offensive, can also be a protector, a defensive weapon. And this is where I'm going to kind of go to the side and disagree a little bit. Having, again, been in the military, I can tell you from experience that you can use every piece of your equipment as a weapon. If it comes time for it, I could take my helmet off, and if I was in close quarters combat, I could take that helmet off and I could employ it as an offensive weapon. I could take any pieces of my equipment and use it offensively. And especially when we look at this uh, section of Scripture and we go, okay, the helmet of salvation. Well, you could actually use all of this equipment to combat and not just not just stand and take the, the pounding, but to actually engage and to say no. And not that you are ever equipped. It's not, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that you are fighting a war. You are no match for Satan. Not a single human is a match for Satan. Only Christ Jesus, him alone, him crucified, risen, the Son of God. Only Jesus. But we're given this so that as we go through our day, You could even be preemptive, and as you go through your day, you're thinking, I'm saved. I'm saved. You can think about the truth of God's word. You can have scripture memorized so that when someone asks you about the hope that is within you, you can share that with them. It's amazing. Here, though, I now segue to the most important part of spiritual warfare, to me, the least talked about aspect of spiritual warfare is found in verses 18 and 19. Think about this. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. And with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. And pray on my behalf that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel. See, the overwhelming, overwhelming key to victory and the key to spiritual warfare isn't the armor necessarily. Yes, it's, it's a huge part, but it's prayer. 
just like when I was in the military, I, I, you know, I might train on certain things for myself, you know, how to shoot my handgun, whatever. But we always worked together as a team. In the 82nd Airborne Division, we had to train to have only 28 people carry on the mission of 100 because that was the estimated 72% was the estimated number of people that wouldn't be able to carry on the mission had we jumped into a conflict. And you can only do that by training together over and over and over and over. Notice that we are told to be in continual prayer and we're to be in continual prayer for one another. That, that, that's amazing. So you can, you, can have, you can have all the word of God within you, can, but it's not just about you. It's about your brothers and sisters and mothers everywhere around the world, locally, in the state, internationally. We have to be in prayer for one another. We have to be in continual prayer for ourselves and for each other, for the church. But then you also have to have humility and ask prayer for yourself. You can't, when someone says, how's it going? You, we have a tendency, at least I do, I know Holly, to go, no, I'm okay. I'm fine. How's it going? I'm just kind of busy. No problem. But on the inside, I might be going, man, I'm really struggling this week. I'm having difficulty and I have to have humility to say, hey, pray for me. Or I've got people at my work that I can actually share the gospel with. And I don't know why I don't do it. I, I, maybe, I feel like I'm just afraid. Whatever the case may be, you have to have the humility to say, I need prayer. And that's the key. You have to be in prayer and you have to ask for prayer. And you need to be in corporate prayer. So when, when you take the mantle of having all this armor on you, that you're engaged with people that are in the same warfare with you, who are having the same difficulties that you are, what a way that you can just be at peace and at night you can bow your head in humility and worship and praise Christ and say, thank you. Thank you, God, that you have granted not only these wonderful truths that I can place upon myself to walk in victory each day, but you have placed these people in my life. Some I will never see. Some I will never hear their voice. And yet they're praying for me. And that's the key when you really whittle it all down. God, you are so good that you have placed us together to walk together on this journey homeward. This world isn't our home, and this world hates us because we're not of the world. And then you can rejoice and worship and praise. But here comes the sad part. This is the part that I have to tell people. You see, that those gifts are only for people who are in Christ Jesus, who have been wrapped in the righteousness of Christ. If you're listening to this and you do not have a, a saving relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, this isn't for you. You're without hope. You're at the mercy of the evil one, and he has no mercy. He's relentless. He will continue to deceive you and continue to promise you things, and it'll never deliver, and you will go further and further down. You see, the hope that we have is in a living, risen Wonderful, beautiful, majestic, glorious God who sits at the right hand of his Father, his God, his Father. And so unless you know Jesus as Lord and Savior, 
There is no way you are equipped. So today, I want to end this program. I want to say to you that God has done for you what you cannot do for yourself. God the Father sent forth his Son, Jesus, born of a virgin. He came into this world, Emmanuel, God with us. And he lived the life that we could not, sinless, perfect, holy. And then, as a sacrifice, as a substitution, he went to the cross. He laid his life down voluntarily. It says that he who knew no sin was made to become sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That Jesus on that cross paid the price, paid the penalty of sin, bore the wrath of God. He cried out to Telestai, it is finished. And on that cross he died. And he was taken down and put in a tomb. And on the third day, God raised him from the dead, accepting his sacrifice, vindicating his word, that God said, if any man keeps my word, he will live. Jesus now, the author and perfecter of our faith, who is risen, who has ascended and sits at the right hand of the Father. Today is the day of salvation, that it is offered to all people everywhere, regardless of where or who or what, when, where, or why. If you come today by repentance, turning from your sin and turning toward God, acknowledging your guilt, acknowledging your sin, and then asking for forgiveness in the name of Jesus Christ and asking for eternal life, peace with God, also in Jesus Christ. If you come by repentance and faith, trusting in God, he promises to cast your sin as far as east is to west. He promises to make you a new creation that you can have peace with him. Amen. What an insight into spiritual warfare, the constant, continual pounding of that anvil. Thank God we've not been left defenseless. We've been clothed with all the armor needful to combat every dart and missile that the enemy launches against us. It is written as a mighty sword to defend and to conquer. If you've been blessed by today's broadcast, we would love to hear from you. Please visit us at thatthemayallbeone.org and click on the contact page. Send us your thoughts or even your prayer requests. We'd love to hear from you. And remember to come back often to our website as we upload new content to be a blessing and encouragement to you. Thanks again for joining us. And remember, there is power in God's gospel beyond all description. Bye-bye now. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of That They May All Be One podcast. For more information about our ministry and resources, please visit us at thatthemayallbeone.org. Also, make sure you rate us on your podcast app, subscribe, and share with a friend. That They May All Be One podcast is a ministry of United in Christ Jesus. 